Welcome world to Life, Love & Wellness Global, a worldwide wellness movement. I am Reverend Sandy Rogers and as the creator of this historic event, it is my pleasure to welcome you. We come together to bring you this historic event. We have practitioners, uh, holistic, um, pr holistic practitioners, we have uh, medical doctors, we have spiritual individuals. This event is so lovingly dedicated to my mother, Mrs. Barbara Dean Brown. And my mother taught me like 40 plus years ago about the importance and the meaning behind herbs. And she would always say, we don't know what they putting in those pills so you better not you know get hooked on prescription drugs and so we listened to mom but not all of us paid attention my sister bless her heart uh, was diagnosed recently thereafter with asthma and uh, she was prescribed prednisone which is a very powerful steroid and my sister actually got hooked on steroids like someone out on the street kind of hooked, you know, like on heroin or crack or something like that. And so my mom and my sister are both on the other side, living in the other dimension, but they're upholding me. And this is dedicated to their memory. So we don't want to come and uh, make you change your mind about what you're doing. We just want to provide information to you, something different so that you have options to, to choose from so that you're not stuck because the, uh, the environment that we now live in, the fast foods, the toxins in the air that we breathe and in the water that we drink and the processed foods and all of that is causing havoc on this precious body temple. So God created our bodies to heal themselves, but they can only heal themselves when they're fed and they're nourished and they're stress-free. And so the 60, uh, or so or more uh, experts that we have are bringing you this worldwide wellness movement in an attempt to share their testimonies and their information with you. So we have uh, from age 14 on up. I don't even know what the oldest age is. I think 88 uh, or something. So you see that's a wide range of knowledge that we're bringing you. And so we hope that you come and that you get all the knowledge that you need to affect a positive change on your life and uh, share this with others. Uh, it's free, it's online. And so we're just so thankful that you decided to be a part of our listening community, the viewing community. And we certainly appreciate you for giving us your time of day and your energy and your efforts to being uh, with us and to being a part of this historic event. We have pulled together people of color for you, by you, right? So we want to make sure that you understand that we too, melanated people, people with color, can enjoy, practice, and participate in some of these modalities that others have been doing for centuries. And that is pretty new to our community. So we talk about Qigong, we talk about meditation, yoga, um, spiritual work from a different perspective than religion. So we talk about the spirituality aspect. We talk about abuse in the families. We talk about all kinds of subject because subjects because we know that in our communities there are layers and layers and layers and layers of stuff that we never talk about that's causing uh, a negative effect on our bodies and its healing process. So we address it, whatever it is, and we hope that you will benefit from the many experts that we have and that you walk away with lots of knowledge and not lots of new information and that you become fully empowered to share information with others. So thank you for being with us. We love you and we bless you and we look forward to doing this again. But thanks for being here with the first one. We appreciate you.
I'm a little distracted because I have Mr. Tony Hill working on my feet. <laughs> so we have Tony Hill that is um, giving me a Thai foot massage. With hot stones. With hot stones, <laughs> no less. So Tony is going to be working lovingly on my feet as he gives us his interview. So, Mr. Hill, anytime you're ready, okay. would you introduce yourself and uh, from there, let it roll. Well, my name is Tony Hill and um, I'm a massage therapist, um, Thai do Thai massage and uh, Swedish do tissue massage and um, more so Thai massage during the last couple of years or something I just kind of drawn, got drawn to. Um, I also, I'm a yoga instructor. I teach yoga, um, different types, hot yoga, um, deep tissue, yin type of yoga. So um, that's pretty much. And I've been I've been a massage therapist for since '94. Um, so um, almost 20 plus years. And you're a veteran. I'm a veteran. Yep. Military. I was doing. I was going to massage school when I was working for the government in DC. So I was kind of doing, you know, working for the government in a stressful job, and the massage just kind of helped me to balance out and to, you know, stay focused because it was a very stressful type, you know, work. So, and I always said to myself, one day I want to be able to just do massage and yoga and enjoy life, and that's what I'm doing. Okay. Because you know, I retired from the federal government, so that kind of helps me paying the budget and the bills and things like that. So. And I was um, from the stress that you were working under. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I wanted. To, I knew I wanted to go back to school to do something, but I knew I didn't want to sit at a desk and shuffle paper the way I was. And one day I went to a friend of mine who's a massage therapist. He did a demonstration. I didn't know him at the time. And I went to the demonstration. I was like, "That's what I want to do." Because I know in my background, in terms of sports and athletics and things like that, that that would be right down my line. So I applied to the school like the next week and got accepted. But I didn't realize it was it was more challenging than I thought it was going to be. There's a lot more to it than just giving massages. You know, it's learning to deal with people's energy. You know, um, then learning that some people don't like to be touched. You know, it's a lot of stuff to come up when you touch people so um, but a person would come for a massage and don't want to be touched well not be touched but they would feel not being able to relax to let go you know to completely you know let go so um, yeah. and um, so I moved to Charlotte in 2006 Charlotte or Atlanta and I moved here and it was a big change you know social life of living in DC you know my church family and stuff like that people had um, I had known but it was, it was the first couple of years I didn't like it but now I really love it you know I was back in DC last weekend and you know the pace and all that I was like so glad I don't have to deal with that anymore <laughs> you know I mean I can come home to Charlotte and you know driving my, up in my driveway and have that peace of mind. So, so and I've been here for 12 years now. But this is where I really kind of started my yoga training and teaching yoga, because I've always been practicing yoga, I just never taught. Oh, really, okay. Right, I've been practicing for about 20 years. Um, but one of my yoga um, teachers said, well, you know, you should go and do the training. I don't like, I really don't like being in front of people, you know, and being the center of attention and being, so I didn't think I'd do a good job, but it turns out I've, you know, I've been teaching for like eight years now, and I, you know, I enjoy it. It's helped me to come out of my shell, okay. you know, in terms of. Yeah, so. So you combine yoga, massage therapy, and you're teaching both of them. I'm teaching yoga. Yoga, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I do. I've done some um, 
Thai yoga body work workshops where I teach couples, people how to give each other Thai massages. Okay. So I've taught that, but I'm not teaching the Thai massage or the massage right now. I did teach massage therapy back in, um, when I lived in D.C. So what are the benefits? Um, wow. So many benefits. The skin, our respiratory systems, our circulatory systems, all the systems in our body are affected by massage. Breathing, our urinary, our like for example, our digestive system and our urinary systems go into come into effect and become active when we are relaxed. Right, we go through our day stressed and all that shuts down. That's why we get ulcers and things like that. So when you get a massage and you relax, your digestive system start to function the way it should. You know, normally. So you hear people you know have you know stomach gurgling and things like that. But that's just a part of the relaxation process. So you teach people how to relax. Yeah, yeah, that's really what it's all about because you know, a lot of people come to yoga in a yoga class and you know, some of them might want to get in shape, lose some weight and things like that, but eventually they come back because they like the way they feel mentally, right? They like that stress management, being able to cope with life. So I try to focus more on making people feel relaxed. Breath work is a big part of it. Helps to slow the heart rate down. Helps you um, get into that that relaxation state, and that's when your and your body's functioning at that peak level. But we spend most of our day stressed, and you know whether we are conscious of it or not, and you know, things just over time start to build up. And so, um, yoga just helps you to manage that stress. Do people realize that they're stressed when they come in? Because some don't we operate sometimes at such a high level of stress constantly that we never know never that know. we need yeah, to. Yeah, but if you got somebody that's coming regularly from a side, they learn to, you know, they learn to know when they get stressed. That's why they come back. You know, certain things happen, and maybe the way they act, they might snap, might have a certain ache in their body. You know, so most people that come on a regular basis know when. Okay, it's time to, you know, take care of myself. Some self care. So, but yeah. what about people that don't, that don't know? know right. No. And that's where people end up turning to, you know, alcohol, drugs, you know, pills to help them sleep. Um, you know, they deal with it in an you know, artificial way. It's funny because in Thailand, right, they got massage there, um, massage studios. You know, all of them down the street. I mean, it's like three on one block. And so one night uh, I was coming home from, it was like 11 o'clock on a Sunday night. And I hadn't had my daily foot massage. So I walked down the street to the, the, the locals and all of them were packed. <laughs> there was no place. I was mad. I ended up having to walk way around the corner. But that's how, you know, 11 o'clock at night, that's what they're doing. They understand. And it's like a row, it's like this, of chairs and massage therapists, you know people ah, snoring or whatever you know but you feel so good after we sleep better too so so sleep is when the healing comes yeah what are some of the other benefits of being relaxed well like I said uh, you know the heart rate slows down so therefore um, lowers your blood pressure puts you in that relaxation Lower the blood pressure. Yeah, I think your immune system gets stronger too because it kicks in. You know, um, circulation of energy flows through your body better when you're relaxed. As opposed to contracted, then you're you know, you're blocking the energy from flowing. Um, wow, there's so many things mentally, spiritually that you you know that you get from massage. And most people it starts out physical, but again, once you get into it, you come back and you realize it's more about learning to manage your, your stress. And we all have it, you know. Everybody has something going on in their life that you don't know about. So, you know, I think this is just a good way for people to, to manage that. But yoga is a way of life, you know, it's a lifestyle. It's not something you just do, it's something you incorporate into your everyday. body and spirit.
the massage works, man. And I was, you know, when I was a kid, my mother, when she would get off work, you know, she worked for the telephone company. And she back then she was one of them operators, you know, like they, the, the board and all that. And when she'd get home, like three or four in the afternoon, she said, go get some rum and alcohol. And she'd lay on the sofa and she said, massage my ankle and feet. And I'd do it and she next time she'd be out, you know. But she'd get her rap, you know, her reps. Yeah. And then yeah. she had to get up and cook dinner and all that stuff. So but your mom started you in your Just like with our hands, all of our body organs are associated in our feet as well, yes. right? Yeah, that's reflexology. Mm -hmm. And then this we do do some pressure points in certain areas. I'll talk about them when I get to them. Areas of the body. interesting because you have I think it's 26 bones and 50 some ligaments in your feet in one foot so a lot of nerve endings so take care of our feet Thank your mom for me, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So your real love is just helping people to learn how to relax. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I, I guess I'll say I want people to feel, I can help people feel the way I feel. Not so much relax, but enjoy, you know. Um, I think that's one of the main goals of yoga is to come to a place of samadhi, and that's peace. Enjoy beyond all, you know, whatever's going on in your life. You know, you may have just lost your spouse or, when, you know, your child or something like that, but you still having, being able to have joy and, and peace in your life. And I think that's when you're, like, in the vortex. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to introduce the stick here. This is a tie stick. A lot of them. Our feet hold us up all day long. It's time for us to do something nice to them. This is this right here is nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I love getting foot massages too, so you know I think we have a tendency to do more um, women particularly the pedicures yeah. than the foot massage, but man that feels wonderful. Yeah. Why not get both? Foot massage and a pedicure. Right, right. Now here's where we get into the we're talking about the certain points on the body. So this would be the head. And all along the top of the toes would be the head. Right. And then coming down here, this would be the eyes and the ears. Pressure okay? Mm -hmm. Coming down to the shoulder. This is the diaphragm. The liver. The 
liver's on both sides, even though it's on only one side of our body, but in this you do matter. Um, palpate, palpate both sides. So as you get down to the heel area, you're coming into the lower part of the person's body. These are the legs, like this is your waistline. And little knot, everything across and down as your, um, you know, your lower body. And this would be considered your spine. You know how the spine is shaped. This would be the head. This is the neck, shoulders, waist, you know, down to the So what would be your message to people of color? Well, I would say, you know, try it out, you know, check it out. I definitely think we definitely need more, you know, in our life, you know, in our, like I said, in our community. Uh, but I think sometimes people, we think that this is not something that we can afford or, you know, it's just not for us. All of us need to learn to manage our stress. Tony, you were talking about touch and our culture and that it may be one of the reasons why we avoid taking care of ourselves and you know with massage or other modalities like that. Yeah, you know, when I first started massage school back in 92, you know, I went in thinking, oh, I'm just all gonna do is do massage and all that stuff. But I learned that there's a lot more to it, you know. And I learned that in our culture, um, touch is something that either, I mean, we it's either, it's touch is conditional touch. In other words, your, you know, sex or if it's violent, you know, um, but we don't do a, any unconditional touch or any, you know, any type of holding or anything like that one. I remember my parents, my mother and father, they, I never saw them like sit down and hold hands, you know, watch TV and things like that. I mean, they were, you know, a husband and wife, but they still didn't touch each other. So I grew up in a family where I didn't experience, see that and experience that. And I think that's one of the things that drew me into doing massage. But yeah, so we don't do a lot of um, unconditional touches all based on what, you know, you have to give something up for it. And so therefore we didn't learn to receive it, right? And I think that's why a lot of people, and, they, and it's you know, documented and proven that infants when they, you know, after they're born, when they stay close to the mother and they get massaged, they end up having better personalities as they get older and not as stressed. So I just think that in our, and then we live in one of the most violent cultures in the world, you know, we got more people incarcerated, you know, and, and, you know, and a lot of people just never learn to have that unconditional touch is always expected to see the sexual or it's violent or you know it's not you know anything that we feel comfortable with because we feel like you know and it's and I think it's the hardest part is receiving you know being able to see that touch without expecting something you got to give something up for it you know so because of the abuse yeah yeah, and so it's a cultural thing. You go to most other countries, you see people walking down the street holding hands and, you know, touching each other and just, and it's not anything sexual, you know, it's just that they, you know, they're friends and they want to show their, their love for each other, their friendship through touch. So, um, unfortunately, I remember when I was in massage school, I was living in D.C. and I lived in a, you know, pretty rough area, drugs and all that. and. This massage school was up in Northwest DC, a predominantly white neighborhood, you know, very, you know, upper class. And I remember after coming from work, going to massage school and being around in that environment where people were just touching and open and happy and peaceful. And then I come home to my neighborhood and you hear a mother cussing her five-year-old child out, get your ass in the house, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm like, just imagine what that child is, you know, having to experience this, you know, this violent, you know, at, you know, and how damaging that is for them as they get older. So, 
Yeah, it's unfortunate that's, you know, our culture, we don't do a lot of them. That kind of touch, except for we're a baby, you know, rocking the baby, you know, cradling and holding and touching because you really care. But you're not expecting anything from that baby, you know, but, but you're giving, you know what I'm saying? So giving without expecting to get something back. So what would be your message? Um, I would say it has to be a cultural change, I guess, you know, but people need to, you know, getting massage and learning to overcome those barriers and overcome that, that fear of not being touched. Um, try to work it out that way. Um, taking care of yourself, you know, honoring yourself, pampering yourself, you know, because you deserve it. You know, you deserve, you know, you shouldn't have to get a, want to get a massage because it's your birthday or whatever, you know. It should be something you use to prevent you from getting sick or a major health problem down the road. So, um, I think it's changing. We're, you know, the West is changing slowly. The East has already been there thousands of years ago. You know, West is changing slowly, but it's still got a long ways to go. Thank you so much, Mr. Hill, for this interview and for <laughs> Your foot the massage. time. Foot massage, yes, sir. Well, thank you for thank allowing you. me to yeah. give you. Oh, okay.